Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Tobias. And I'm Bobby. And we're your Thursday couple on for a couple of gays. So we're back, and we are here today to talk about our coming out stories. So, okay, you go first. Yours is a lot well, longer don't... than mine. Well, that means you should go first. No, yours is a lot longer. Okay. My coming out story started off when I guess everyone's story is always changing and evalu and and changing and all that fun stuff. So my stories. Still going on. I don't know. You're always coming out. Um, whether it's to your new landlord, or your new job, or when you move. So, you're always coming out. Just remember that. My story started off when I was born. I was born into a very big religious family. I'm one of, one of the 11 children. And at a very young age, it was just told that you're not supposed to be gay. And that was that. So... I was homeschooled for the most part growing up until when I was in the, when I was like 10 years old and um, I was being called a faggot and stuff like that so I would go home and like talk to my grandma or my father and my parents were divorced before I was even born and my <clears throat> my grandma would say a faggot means a bundle of sticks and and I was like, I'm being called a happy bundle of sticks. I don't really understand, you know. So then I connected the dots and realized what kids were talking about and realized I was gay. I never really thought about it much until I got to school. Um, and I knew that when I was discovering, when I discovered that I was gay, I knew that it was not okay. I know I look fat. I knew that it wasn't, and I'm wearing McDonald's. And I knew that it was against what my family's religion was. So I kept it hidden. I mean, I'm more flaming than a $2 bill. So I came out to my teachers and friends at school, and they were okay with it, of course. Um, but my family was really different about it. Yeah. Um, so I came out to my grandma driving home, and I don't suggest come out in the car. It's not the best of places to come out. It's You're stuck in that car. <laughs> so I was driving home from school one day, and I told my grandma that I was gay. And she says that you can't be gay and you're not going to be gay and we're not going to talk about it. So I got home and I said, well, we need to talk about it. I don't want to go to hell, um, you know. So my family ended up putting me through reparative therapy. So for an entire year I went through therapy and counseling and I went to camps. I was put through lots of, lots of, lots of stuff. Um, even shock therapy at one point, which isn't legal. Shock therapy, they take you and they put you in a chair and they basically handcuff you to it in a way and they like um, connect all these cords to you and they show you on a television screen stereotypical gay things and stereotypical straight things. Um, and they amp electric, electric waves into your body um, when they show you the gay things. And then they turn it off when they show you heterosexual stuff. Ouch. So in a way, did you hear that? Yeah. It hurt. So in a way, they were trying to change me or force me to turn straight. Well, basically, it wasn't changing. I was who I was. So after a year of going through all of that, I told my family that I'm not going to be straight. I am who I am. I love who I am. And there's nothing you can change about that. So basically, I was told to have a suitcase packed. Um, this was when I was 12 years old. And my grandmother said, be home and ready to go somewhere. So I came home and was and kind of like in a, what's that called? Do you know what I'm talking intervention. about? Intervention? I, I walked into an intervention, kind of like Carrie did. 
and I basically sat through hours of my family gay bashing me down to my own brother physically kicking my ass to get out of the house. So I was 12 years old at the time and my family kicked me out. So for the next year I was homeless um, and then when I was found I was living under a bridge by a teacher. Oh my God. I, I was found living by living under a bridge by a teacher. They took me home for just one day and my family had a little rest in peace and loving memory kind of thing in the corner. So my family actually said I died at the time and didn't want to continue. They, my, I remember one of the last things my father said to me was they'd rather their son be dead than gay. So, so yeah, so I returned home just for like a couple of days before I was, or a day or before I was kicked out again. So then they put me in foster care. So the next three years of my life, I was in foster care. And when I was 16, I decided that I didn't want to move around so much. So I was put in my own independent living program by the state. So I basically paid for my own apartment um, and worked two jobs while I was in high school. So I finally graduated from high school a year mm -hmm. early. And um, then I moved to Kalamazoo, where I started going to Western Michigan University for the next three years of my life. Um, and when I went to college, that was the first time I actually thought about my sexuality because if I think about it, where are you going? Oh, I'm just getting up when I'm I, falling asleep. When I think about it, um, when I was kicked out of school, when I was kicked out of my home for being gay, I didn't really get to think about my sexuality because I was homeless or I was in reparative therapy and then I was homeless and then I was in foster care and then it just worked. So by the time I got to college, that was the first time I actually thought about my sexuality and some people when they come out you know they say they're gay and they actually get to say it I never really said it and had that moment of oh I'm gay I'm gay you know kind of thing so I basically um, kind of went boy crazy I dated a lot of guys when I was in college um, and then it wasn't until after we met and we started to date and we were living in Kalamazoo because um, at one point I moved away from Kalamazoo and then we moved back to Kalamazoo together and got an apartment. Mm -hmm. So I got in contact with some of my family again. My One of my relatives Facebooked me, found me on Facebook. She invited me to her graduation party and... Um, she invited me, so for like three or four months, I hid it from him. Um, I didn't let him know that I was planning on going. And then two days before the trip, I said, hey, do you want to come to my cousin's graduation party? She wants me to come, and he wasn't very happy because I hid it from him. And on top of that, yeah. my entire family was going to be there. So my father, his girlfriend, um, my grandmother, my cousins, a lot of my family... Or have mixed feelings about it. Some of them don't agree with what my family did. And some agree. Um, so my family. My cousin talked to my family. And they said that they're sorry for what they did. And all that stuff. Well. Um, I We drove down there. And we hey, this is your coming out story. Not your. This not is. Your... I'm just talking about it. I'm just talking about. Okay. Just do with it. You can tell your story. How you tell your story. Mine's going to be like three minutes. Okay. So I. I spend more than two seconds talking about something anyways so, so I saw my family for the first time and they say they're okay with it but then yet again I come back home and they don't answer their phones or they don't call me and they don't ask how I'm doing blah 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 so a lot of my family are still weird about it um, my uh, my cousin and my aunt however I do stay in contact with them so so anyways so with that being said that's my coming out story. It's very complicated and very complex. That's my story, I guess. Your turn. Well, mine's not going to be 10 minutes long. Mine's going to be a little bit less, but, um, but overall, I, like, throughout my life, I dated women, and then, and then I wanted a taste of the men, or, or, or boy. I'm not a boy. Well, when did you start realizing you were gay? Oh, I knew I was. Even though you were dating women? Women. Women, 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 women. Yeah. So you dated women. Yeah. Oh, oh well, yeah, and... 
When did you? Hold on. Okay. 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 Ask questions. I'm asking questions okay. to help okay. your story okay. go longer. Okay. When did you realize you were attracted to men? Like around puberty? Yeah. Okay. Which was a lot of two years ago. <laughs> Look at me. I'm just kidding. Fuck off. So anyway, so then you dated women mm -hmm. for, you know, you actually were in relationships for what, two, three years, four years, five years? Okay. Uh, how about two? I don't I know. know. You, were in, you were in a... You were in long-term relationships with women. Yeah. Knowing true. you were gay. So anyways, mm -hmm. let's talk about mm. after that then. Well, after that, um, or well, the, or well, the way I really came out to my parents was, I, I, I told my mom I was bisexual, and then she said, okay. And then I were you dated nervous? you. Uh, no. No. So you I, just called her up and said, did you call her? Tell her in person? Oh, I told her in person. Okay. And then, um... I mean, did you sit down and say, I got something to tell you? Yeah. Well, you need to talk about that. This is... No. They want to know. I don't want, I don't want to tell them. Why not? It's, it's personal. I don't my personal life being broadcast. We kind of broadcast our personal life, and we're not going in detail about so, it. So, yeah. It's just like how you so can I, So I, yeah, so I told my mother I was bisexual, and then... I started dating you and I moved. So and you was, jumped right in a relationship, graduated high school, and peaced out. Yep. And so, then, so she thought really bad of you, and she thought that being gay or being bisexual was just about sex, not about mm -hmm. the relationship wise. How you can physically and be emotionally attracted to the same sex. So then you moved to Kalamazoo with me. Yep, Kalamazoo with you. And then, every we had we had to move back up north. So then it wasn't until what you moved back up north where your family we're starting to accept you a lot more. Starting to accept me, I think. Now that you guys know what my story is, um, that when his family heard what they did to me, it was more like, oh my god, I can't believe someone would do that to their kid. Like you know, they would have never kicked Bobby out for being gay. And that was my worst fear was, you know, coming out. I thought I thought my family was going to put me through therapy and then eventually just accept me for being gay. I didn't expect to be kicked out, you know. Right. So I think that his family, when they hear, you know, when they first heard that I was kicked out, you know, all I heard was his dad, you know, say, oh, my God, really, really? And so we went to, like, a family reunion. Was it New Year's or Christmas dinner or something? We went to some... Some get together with his family, and his dad's like, you know, his dad's like an ally, like, uh, right away, he's like, if anyone says anything, I'll get my gun out and shoot the motherfucker. <laughs> like, so, his dad just, you know, I feel really, really proud to know your dad, even though it doesn't, it's not a huge, huge issue to him, but, I mean, the fact that your dad is like, you know, if anyone's going to say anything or make any comments, I'll be right up, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, know, shoot yeah, him, you know? know. So the fact that your dad's, your dad's come a long way. I think that when they first, when they first met me, mm -hmm. stop. When they first met me, they didn't really understand or know, really. Right. Until we came up here and sat down and actually talked with them. So your parents have come a long way. Yeah. yeah. And they now actually ask how I'm doing when they call, you know, in phone conversations. Never once, I mean, I can call up my father right now, but it doesn't really do me any good. If I call up my father, it doesn't do crap. Like, even if I do, he doesn't ask how Bobby's doing. Well, how's everything? Oh, everything's everything, you know. It's kind of like Chantel, you know, when she calls her parents and stuff. You know, well, how's everything? Oh, it's the same. You know, it's the same with me. My family doesn't ask, you know. They don't care, but, you know, I think at one point, Bobby and I were engaged, but we kind of took, step, we stepped back from that, and we're not engaged anymore, just because we weren't really ready for that. But, when I told my father, oh, cool. So, it's struggling, it's a, it's a, I mean, my family's come a long way, obviously, the fact that they're actually even talking to me, you know, so, I don't forgive them what they did. You shouldn't. You know. But I think having your family here and actually having somewhere to go for Christmas, you know, and being accepted part of their family, mm. I think it's really cool, so. Well, that's good. 
anything else about your your coming out story? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, what are your thoughts about coming out and Pride Month and all that stuff? Just do it. Just, do it what? Just come out. Come like, out? Like, stop hiding who you are. Yeah. But just be prepared, you know, like his story, he wasn't kicked out and, you know, his parents were kind of okay with it or they See, weren't really. This is the bad. I know, this is the bad. bad gay story. And this then is, this, this is, is the, the better. The better. So you never know what people's reactions are going to be. Right. You don't understand what people are going to, really? You don't understand, because I'm cutting myself off. You don't understand well, what. Cut Stella like this. No. Hello. I look fat. Well, anyways, going back to what I was saying, you never really know what people are going to do. I thought my family, I wasn't expecting to be kicked out. So, you do have to be prepared for either or coming out. You know, don't sugarcoat it by saying you're bisexual to ease into it. I mean, I I said I sugarcoated it. Well, no, no, no. Bisexual, well, people, a lot of people tend to say they're bisexual to ease into coming out later as gay. And I mean, if that's what you have to do to do it, you know, whatever. But... I guess a bad rep for bisexual people. But, I mean, I would say, you know, it's it's just, it's a difficult thing and I don't understand why it is. You know, I love you, we're a, cu- we're a couple, and so be prepared for the consequences of either or. Like, <laughs> also, don't assume that someone's, you know, gay. gay. It's just because their family told me. Or they're heterosexual looking like Bobby, because... Mm-hmm. A lot of people say that they didn't assume that Bobby was gay, but a lot of people say they knew. I think when you personally know Bobby, yeah, you know. But when you just kind of walk by, you don't know that he's gay. All right. So, things that we can learn from this. Yeah, thanks. Things that we can take from this. Don't assume. Coming out, you know, some people do it in a letter, some people do it over the phone, text message, Facebook. Um... Some people I've known came out, one of my good friends from Kalamazoo says that he never came out as gay. He said that he's with someone, and he's really happy with this person, and his family's like, oh, that's really awesome. And he's like, and his name is Joe Schmo, so. Ouch. So, yes. No, hold both my hands, because you, you talk with your hands, so. Why? Why is it a big deal that I talk with my hands? It isn't. I just want to hold your hands. I, I just want yeah. to hold your hands. So you want me to stop using my hands when I no, talk? I well, I talk want, with my hands. I just wanted to hold your hand because I love it so much. Oh, okay. Anyways, so this is our coming out stories. Um, we love you guys. So June is Pride Month, so go go to Pride. Dude, I've never been to a Pride. I, I have. No, you yes, haven't. Where? I went Where? to the Kalamazoo Pride when you were at work. Uh, remember we both worked overnight and we both slept during the entire day? Oh, I went to Pride. Oh, wow. Lies. You have a good I do have a good memory. <laughs> so, you no a- tickle. No tickle. I do have a good memory. See? See this, guys? And I know he's a bad liar because guess what he said? I went to Kalamazoo Pride. The smirk came right across his face and the look in his eye. I read him like a book. Okay. So, no tickle. I'm not doing anything. So, anyways. Alright. So, after coming out story, subscribe to the channel. Comment. Thumbs up. Like it. Subscribe to my personal channel. Um, what else? Anything else? No. Okay. Well, that's all that we have for you. The video is going to be a little bit long, but that's fine. So, all right, guys. We're going to catch you on the flip side. Stop. All right. Do this. Bye.